this just got real, right? That statement is kind of like caught on here. Um, just society says that now. Maybe you're sitting at school and something happens, case in point. You know, you're thinking something like kind of a joke is going on. Everyone's having a good conversation and they're laughing and you're in the hallway about to go to a class or you're with your family hanging out. And then all of a sudden that person's like, yeah, but did you know that? And they get all serious on you and you're like, whoa, this just got real, right? Have you used that statement before? Okay, maybe not that one. (laughs) Playing sports for fun, right? We're just having a fun time. We're just going to go out there. We're going to play ultimate Frisbee. I love ultimate Frisbee. I was telling Randy this story the other day and I'm like, I was, I was playing and playing ultimate Frisbee. It was supposed to just be a fun day. And I was getting so competitive because I'm a little competitive. And so I was like, read the disc, you know, like yelling in a nice way. And I remember looking at my wife. She's like, you know, like, Steven, this is fun. Like, (laughs) do whatever you want. It's okay. But like in those moments in sports, you're playing, it's all fun, and then maybe you get hit, right? Or someone boxes you out in basketball, right? and then you're like, this just got real. Now, now I'm about to start. Now I'm about to start playing. Um, we do premarital counseling, right? So for anyone who's getting married, and there's a couple of you sitting here are engaged, and I'm going to have the privilege to do your wedding. So Ann and I will meet with couples, and sometimes we'll ask this question. We'll sit them down. They, they just got engaged. Maybe it's our second session with them or third session, and we're like, hey, you know, we have to ask the serious questions. So if there's one thing you could change about that person, right, what would that be? So at first, yeah, you said, yikes. At first, it's like, oh, nothing, nothing, you know, and Jamie and Joe will just make them our people. No, nothing's wrong with Jamie. She's perfect in every way. And Jamie, the same with Joe. And it's this whole sweet thing. And we're like, okay, so there's nothing. No, no, it's fun and it's butterflies. Till one of them says like, well, just that one thing that they did. And when that happens, it gets real. (laughs) Person's like, yeah, well then fine. If this is how we're doing it, you did it. And then it just opens up and that's okay. It's good. We get that all out. But those are these moments, right? We look Something just got real. You're in a room having fun and someone walks in with a mustache. Just got real, right? I don't know what it is about mustaches, but flannels and mustaches for the festival. That's what I'm feeling. Um, But on a serious note, on a serious note, I want to talk to you about what real is. And I'm going to give a quick definition, okay? Definition of real. True, not merely ostensible or apparent, existing or occurring as a fact, Actual rather than imaginary, ideal or fictitious, okay? So it's actual rather than being something that's imaginary or something that's ideal or fictitious and fake. It has actual existence. Something that's real has actual existence. But I'm not here tonight to talk philosophy with you, okay? I'm not going to go through Platonic realism, metaphysics. I'm not going to do all that stuff. Nominalism. Uh -uh. I'm not going to bring us to a philosophy course here. I love those topics, and I think they're phenomenal and awesome, but I want to focus tonight and challenge you on the reality in which you embrace your faith. The reality in which you embrace your faith and your beliefs. That's what I want to discuss tonight, because I feel when we stare and we see and we hear the gospel story, the gospel narrative, It's more than just nice words. It's more than just beliefs or a way to live your life. It's more than religious thought or simple philosophy on life. Though I think many times that's what we see it as. We see Christianity, we see what's taking place there just as, oh, it's just religious thought. It's just a way to live my life with a bunch of things I need to do to do right. Now listen, the Bible does tell us how to live our life, but if, if you're just doing that, you're missing out on everything. You're missing the whole picture. You're missing out on the core and the essence of the reality of what we believe. Looking at the word of God and through the history of the church, we have been given a story. We have been given the truth. And in that, there is reality. We have to encounter and accept this. So to be a Christian, to have faith in Christ, there is no other option than to accept the reality of these four key things. 
And I'm really just hitting one tonight because this is going to be a series, but I want to read them to you. First, the reality of an ontological transformation of our very being. That means everything inside of us, we're transformed, we're changed. Two, the reality of an eternal freedom beyond intellect and imagination. Three, the reality of divine reconciliation of intimacy between humanity, the creation, and God, the creator. And finally, the reality of a covenant of grace from our Savior Jesus to a sinner, you and me. We have to accept these things, not as just ideal, hypotheticals, poetic symbols, non-literal and symbolic. No, these are real things, experiences, truths that are taking place. There is reality. There is a true reality behind them. All the way from Genesis to Revelation are events that are representing the reality of the truth of what we believe, what Christ can and will do in and through us. I had an epiphany moment this week. I literally thought, wow, this is really an epic story. You know what I mean? Like we see movies and we see all this stuff and we're one of the most entertained generations ever, right? I mean, we're constantly, we got our smartphones updating us on whatever we want it to be. We can choose whatever we want to watch on TV, record, do this, that. So, so we're, we're constantly seeing these things. So we, we, we see these epic stories or hear about them. Things that we're like, man, wow. Wow, that is awesome. Or we watch like an old movie about a war hero or, or something like that, and you're like, man, it's so epic to be a part of something like that. And I thought, man, when I read Holy Scripture, and like I said, the reality of it, when I read it and I believe that it is true and it is real, that Christ Jesus is really coming back. He is returning. And I get to play a role in this, I get to be a part of the church. Wow. That's an epic story. Wait, but there's also elements and facts that go beyond even the finite in this story. It enters into the realm of the eternal and the infinite and God. Beyond what I can even grasp with my mind that I'll ever be able to grasp with my mind. The supernatural aspects of this story. So all this comes together, and I thought this week, I really believe this stuff. Did you ever have one of those moments? Like you could be talking to someone, you could be around a bunch of church people, you could use all the lingo, Christ is returning, he's coming back, salvation, changing myself, transformation, redemption, right, restoration, blessing. They're like, what are these words? Sinful nature, what does that mean? What are you saying about me, man? Right, so we have all this terminology, but when we really step out of that for a second in the reality check, like, wait a second, this is what I'm saying I believe. This is what I have faith in that's true and real. And I had this epiphany moment. I thought, wow, if I truly believe and have faith in the work of Jesus Christ, Am I living consistently and authentically in this reality? Consistently and authentically in this reality. Does it penetrate every part of who I am and what I do? Who I believe Jesus Christ is, that he really does transform who I am, my being, my very being, the person that I am, he transforms it. He changes it. That Jesus really did die for you and for me to be restored back into an intimate relationship with God. And that Jesus is really coming back. One day I'll be able to be in the presence of my Lord and Savior. If I really believe this, that it's true and that it's real, am I letting that show in every aspect of who I am, how I interact at work, 
how I interact with friends, with family, when I go to the store, when I'm pumping gas, when I'm shopping in the mall. In every part of what I do, am I looking through the lens of the reality of my faith? I want to read Romans 6, 3 through 14. See, the great thing about talking to young adults, people over 18, you guys can last through like 11 scripture verses. I know you have that ability. Because either you're in college or you're working at a job and you have to focus at certain points during those things, right? Okay, so we even have the scripture up there. Ryan has been nice enough to put them together. So will you read this with me? Not out loud, because then that just gets funny. We're all at different paces. Um, But just follow with me, all right? Romans 6, 3 through 14. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. Present your members to God as instruments of righteousness, for sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law but under grace. You are not under law but you are under grace. See, a new covenant has been made. A new covenant between us and God through Jesus Christ that we become new. See, that's why when someone gets water baptized, right, at church here when we do water baptisms, it's symbolic, an outward expression of what's taking place inwardly. The testimony, I once was this, But now, and as I'm dipped into the water, showing the cleansing, the newness, I am new. Now I am new. I'm a new creation. I've been transformed. I've literally, my being has been transformed. Newness has taken place. Now, covenant was not just something. When you look at the word covenant, and really when you study in the word of God what a covenant was, it it didn't just impact a part of someone, right? It didn't just impact a certain part of someone. It literally penetrated their identity. Case in point, marriage. One of the most beautiful covenants. When you got married to someone, it was not just you by yourself, It is now your identity together. So for instance, Anna and I, and don't worry, that's our leadership meeting they're having in there, and they're worshiping. We got some great people they're worshiping. So if you get pulled into the presence of worship, you just stand in the corner, all right? (laughs) Worship through that wall. But marriage, Anna and I got married. Well, now it wasn't just Stephen. It was Stephen and Anna. My very identity has changed. I wasn't just a single dude. I was a married man, right? Right? Something has literally changed. My identity has been penetrated and no longer am I just, hey, I'm a bachelor. I got a wife now. I got to provide for her, take care of her. Everything about who I am has changed. Listen, Christ Jesus is not requesting a shallow or surface level connection with you and me. He wants to penetrate every part of our being, every single part. Revelation 3.20, I want to read it to you. 
says, listen, I am standing at the door. This is Jesus talking. I'm standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come into you and eat with you and you with me. Jesus says, I will come in and I will eat with you. I will eat with you. Many times covenants in the Bible, they were done at a table over a meal. Sharing a meal with someone is very intimate. That's why it talks about in scripture, we're sharing the meal of God's grace. We took communion last week. It's the meal of God and his grace. Listen, I use this example all the time. And this is, what I, this is kind of an analogy summing up of what we're talking about tonight. And at this time, actually, the band, you guys can make your way back up here. But listen, if I created a feast for you, a feast. I mean, you came to our home and Ann and I were working all day and we created a feast and it was at our table and I invited you up, right? And you said, and you came over and I said, sit at this table. Here's all the food we made. And you just sat there and you observed it and you smelled it. You're like, it smells so good. It smells so good. And we sat there for like five minutes. I'm like, maybe they're taking in the smell. It smells so good. It looks so good. Ooh, I touched it. Oh, it feels so good, Right? And we're like, yeah, 20 minutes later, nothing's happening. You're not eating it yet. I'm like, okay, you can eat it. No, 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 no. I just want to see it, touch it, feel it, be a part of this moment here now. But if you never ate the food, you wouldn't have really what? Ever experienced what we made. See, we come to church And the religious aspect of it, the philosophy of it, right? We come here, we sit there, we see an experience, we smell it, we almost feel like we're even touching it, but we never get it on the inside. We never actually begin to eat that meal of God's grace. Because if we do, it's penetrating every part of our being. Now it's in our body. Now it's become who we are. Now it's strengthening who I am, who you are. We can't just observe. We have to participate. How awkward would that be if you're at my house, right? I'm like, that's it, leave, get out of here. You just touched my food for 25 minutes. You haven't even eaten it. But see, we do that with our faith. We miss that on the reality of who Christ is, what he can do, how he transforms. It's not just religious It's not just a series of events and things that we do. This is a transformation that takes place on the inside of us, who we are, who we become. Something inside of you really does change. But see, we do something. We compartmentalize our lives. We compartmentalize our lives. Here's here's my work and, and here's my faith and here's my relationships, and here's the music I like, and this is how I like to celebrate my weekends, and this is how I like to engage in my family, and we create all these compartments. And you know what? We do that with our faith. We do that with Jesus. Just limited in one spot. I know all of you are like, what is this here? Are you gonna baptize us? No. But we compartmentalize and we do this with our faith, with our belief in who Christ is. And maybe we do it purposely or unconsciously, but we're doing it. Purposely because we're like, yo, we know the consequences. When I reveal who Christ is in my life at work, there's going to be consequences. Get a little awkward. My coworkers get a little uncomfortable with me. We realize things might begin to change things might actually begin to change. Things we valued once might not have as much value anymore. See, when we really believe that Christ transforms us, when we really believe that Jesus Christ is alive and real and active and he's coming back, whether in our lifetime or after us, he's coming back or I'm going to see him, right? 
if we really believe this? Why do we segregate it and keep it away? Why does it only hit parts of us? And this is what I'm, I'm gonna jump right into this. It's like my religious experience and this water is my life. The vessel of my life. Sweet, it was a great night. It's a great night. Wow, the Lord's really doing some awesome things inside of who I am. Look at this, man. Wow, I am filled up. There you are, Jesus. And work comes around. Mm, you know what? That would be uncomfortable. Not going to show them that part of who I am. Okay. That relationship. Mm. You know what? Let me just, nope, nope. Let me do this. Sweet. Okay, hey, so-and-so, you can come. You can, you can drink of my life. You can drink of my life. One second before you do, let me take that cup. Here you go. Look at this. There you are. Drink up. Oh, hold on. I got that interview coming up. I can't let Jesus shine in my life in that way. I can't show who he is in that way. We have the control. We can be religious and we can have Jesus when we want to and when it's convenient because still it's just a philosophy. Still it's just a way of living. It's just a bunch of rules. It's just a book we keep Right next to us, it gets a little dusty. We open it up when we're feeling good and we plop it in there. Give me the word today. No, not right now though. My hand's getting soaked. It hasn't become real. It hasn't become real who we are. Jesus transforms. The covenant he did, right? You might be like, this is Sunday school st style. I don't care, I'm taking you back. <laughs> the covenant of Jesus Christ, his precious blood that was shed, 1 Peter 1, 18 through 23. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundations of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart, you have been born anew, not of perishable but unperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God, which is the news of his gospel. The covenant of Christ, our life. When we embrace it, yep. When we embrace that covenant, Jesus. Jesus, the reality of who you are. Jesus, the reality of who you are penetrates my very being. I can't make a distinction anymore. You can't separate Jesus anymore from my life. He's becoming the very person that I am. The very person that I am. Now, when people begin to embrace and drink from my life, they're going to get Jesus. They're going to get Jesus. This is the picture I saw. If I really believe in the reality of who Christ is and the truth of his gospel, then I cannot compartmentalize my faith in everything I do, who I am, how I interact, the skills, my abilities, my work, my schoolwork, my relationships, every part of who I am. The transformation of Christ is being shown in me. See, we have to begin to live in that reality. We have to begin to live in that reality. 
That's my challenge to you tonight. Yeah, I know. It's simple, right? It's simple. I got red dye all over my hands for you. It's going to take me like three days to get this off. I don't want to ever give you this type of religious experience. I don't ever want to give this to you because it's not real. It's not real. The blood of Christ. Maybe it's your first time here. You're like, guy's talking about blood. It's getting weird. Next you're going to pass around juice, right? No, we're not. <laughs> the blood of Christ is what he shed for you and me on a cross. Yeah, it wasn't a pretty scene at all. It was barbaric. To show his love and to redeem and to restore us. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. When I see this, that's what I want my life to be. Because there's brothers and sisters across this world who are brought to the reality. Do you believe in who Christ is? Is he your savior and he, is he your Lord? And they know that answer is an answer that will end their life. And they could simply pull out that part. But they can't because they're like, any place you go in my life, you're gonna find Jesus. Any place you dive into in my life, you're gonna find Jesus. Anything you ask me, it's gonna be seen through the lens of Jesus Christ. He has transformed me. He has made me. He is in me. I am becoming like him. You want real religious experience? Begin to live in the reality of who Christ is and what he has done. And you will see the reality of his power and his presence in your life. If you live in the reality of what Christ has done for you and for me, you let that penetrate every part, guess what? You'll begin to live in the reality of his power. So let's stand up tonight. Let's take this opportunity. Listen, you could be walking with Jesus since you were a baby, right? But there's still those parts of you that you've let sit in there parts of your life. There's still sections where you've just gone for the religious moment, the religious experience. He wants all of you. He wants to transform all of you. He wants to penetrate every part of your being to make you new. The disciples, they caught this. They caught this. So much so that every single one of them but the Apostle John gave their life for Jesus. Because you couldn't take Jesus out of them. I do not want Jesus taken out of me. I do not want Jesus taken out of me. I want all of them. I want all of me in him. I want full surrender. And I was convicted of that. Convicted of that. And that's my challenge to you tonight. It could be five of you that say, all right, and it's worth it. Because five people who are like this, then every person you encounter is gonna drink of the love and the life of Christ. So let's worship tonight. Take this moment, this opportunity. Search your heart. Where are you at? There's no potion here. I don't need to come drop red dye on your head. It's a process. And it starts in the mind and the self. Lay yourself down and embrace him. He'll embrace you.